Welcome to the Sober Bartender Podcast, the show where we recover from life. I'm your host, Brandi Kelly. Today, we're going to talk about being all that you can be, not in the army, but in your life. We're going to talk a little bit about some self-doubt. We're going to talk about worry and what it does in our life what it does for our life, why it's actually there, and what we can do what we can do when we start experiencing doubt and worry when we're trying to be all that we can be. I know that we have limitless potential. I say this to you often. Like there is nothing available to anyone in this life that is not available to us, to you and to me. So if you are 50 and you, you know, have worked in a grocery store all your life and you really want to become a hairdresser and it's just something that you always wanted to do, but you thought, you know, I maybe it's too late or maybe I'm not, I won't be good at it or really those thoughts are what are holding you back because you won't know unless you actually give it a try, right? So There's no right time to start. There's no starting point. There's never a time where we'll be ready. But that doubt, that that doubt that holds us back, like why is that there? And I've been thinking about that because I kind of, you know, I've got a lot of irons in a lot of fires right now. And... I feel like the fear of failure, the fear, the fear of not reaching the success is kind of holding me back a little bit, but just like with recovery, the fear of staying the same and continuing to do the same thing is a lot scarier. Like I, I don't let the the self-doubt hold me back because what if I feel, what if I fail is there, but also like, what if I don't? Because if I don't even start, then I'm just right where I am 10 years from now. I mean, are you where you want to be in 10 years? Are you implementing things in your life to get where you want to be in 10 years? What about in five years? What about in one year? What about in one month? What about in a week? So you can't get there next week unless you start with today, right? And I don't want to sit, I don't want to sit with regret because like the worry, worry doesn't, doesn't change anything. If there's something that I can change, then I need to just change it, not worry about it. And if there's something that I can't change, worry isn't going to change it. So is there action I can take? If yes, take it. If no, let that shit go. So when I think about my goals, when I think about where I want to be, I know that I'm not going to get where I want to get by starting tomorrow. I know that I'm not going to be who I want to be if I put things off until tomorrow or until next week, because then next week is day one instead of one day. There's so much doubt in our own capabilities, like it holds us back and it think you know, it's there to protect us. It's there to keep us safe from the disappointment. Like if we don't trust that we're capable of these things, then we have like this little fail safe, this little, um, like this little protection built in, right? But we also don't get where we want to go. So there's the bigger disappointment that's out there outside of this little protective comfort zone. 
of endless possibilities like this that we stay safe in that we know and we trust and we continue to do like my bartending career we stay here because we're safe and we can control this and we know what it's going to be besides some you know there are some variables but if you break that open it's scary because it's the unknown but it's limitless endless potential outside of that comfort zone but that self-doubt and that fear and that worry and that just feeling that I need some some kind of control over a situation you know it keeps me safe but it's also keeping me safe from everything out there available to me It's holding me back. I'm not saying go out and quit your job. I'm not saying, you know, pick a school, any school. But I'm saying, like, if there's something that lights you on, like, lights you up and just gets you excited and you think about it when you wake up or you just, you know, it's always in the back of your mind or in the front of your mind or you could just talk about it for hours you could read about it, learn about it. You enjoy doing it. And that's not something that you actively pursue. It's just a, a someday or a, you know, you feel like it's not available to you. I'm here to tell you that it is. I'm here to tell you to try. This podcast was that for me. This was something that I wanted to do. I didn't know how I wanted to use my voice, but I knew that in some way I needed to just share a message of light after the dark. You know, I needed to let people know like there is life after, you know, getting sober and there is a whole different world and a whole different you and everything is possible. And I had a lot of self-doubt when it came to starting this podcast and my husband really encouraged me and supported me and reminded me of why I wanted to start and why I was the right person to do it and why no one else has my voice and my experience and my thoughts and he reminded me how I am able to help other people and that was the encouragement that I needed when I was questioning myself and I took a risk and I bought a course and I took the course and I took it seriously. And here I am today on the Sober Bartender podcast. And there are still parts of this that I don't fully, you know, embrace. Like, you know, there are different, you know, back backstage things that I could, would, should be doing that I'm not doing yet. But what I am doing is the creative part. I am doing the part that, that lights me up and that just, you know, it, it makes me feel alive and it aligns with my purpose. And I know, I know that I'm here and I know why I'm here when I'm sitting here talking to you. So if you have a thing and it doesn't have to be a podcast, if it is a podcast, get do something, create something, sit down and use the voice memo app on your phone and just talk into it. You're going to feel ridiculous. It's going to feel uncomfortable. Send it to someone and just let that one person that you trust most listen to it. You know, um, there are, there are several different, um, you know, ways to go about getting after your dream. But I feel like the way is just to start. Just pick something and do it. Do a little bit of it. Like dip your toe and then get your whole foot in there. You know, because you can spend hours like researching and figuring out how to do something perfect and you can watch all the videos. I mean, you can learn how to do anything on YouTube. I learned how to change um, an LED light in my kitchen a couple years ago by myself. 
It was the most empowering thing ever. Um, just by watching a YouTube video and hitting pause constantly and turning off the breaker. Anyway, um, but the secret is just to start. Start something. And then go from there. Because if you wake up every morning and you can't stop thinking about it, but you also have the imposter syndrome and the questions of who am I to create something or who am I to have that dream? Who am I to own a salon? Who am I to, you know, go and sell cars or, you know, coach people or, you know, teach surfing or sailing or whatever it is? All of those things are available to you and it's your own comfort zone and your own self-doubt, your own questions are what are holding you back. They are stopping you dead in your tracks from everything that is available to you beyond that comfort zone. And it's terrifying out there. It's so scary. The unknown is so scary. Don't get me wrong. But I feel like we reach a point where staying the same is a little bit scarier. You want to keep living how you live, doing what you do in a week from now, maybe, because that's not that far away. In a month from now, do you want to be in the same place? What about a year from now? Because if you do the same thing that you're doing, you will have the same exact thing a year from now. Maybe some different challenges, maybe some different, you know, obstacles. But if nothing changes, then nothing changes. So you will have exactly what you have right now in one year if you don't do anything different in that year. And what about five years? Maybe some more challenges, maybe some more obstacles, you know, some ups and downs, the ebb and flow of life. But if you just continue to do what you're doing today, you know what you will have five years from now and 10 years from now. And if that is a good thing, like if you're out there hustling and grinding and you know that today you're doing more than yesterday and that means in one week you're going to be doing more than you were a week ago and in one month you're continuing to build on that progress, you're on a forward trajectory, then what you're doing today is good news if that's what you're going to have in a month or that's what you're going to have in a year or in five years or in 10 years because you're headed in the direction that you want to go. Because right now I'm in like this in between, but I'm on a forward path. I am moving towards my goals. I am stepping out of my comfort zone into the unknown. I'm doing things that scare me. I'm, you know, I haven't reached the, the, pinnacle of where I'm going but I don't know that that exists I just know that each day I do feel more and more aligned with the life that I'm living and with the message that I carry and with the connection that I have to the world and the impact that I have on the world that I live in um So while I'm not there, I'm headed there. So if I continue to have the the work and the willingness that I have today in a month, I will be farther ahead because I'm not standing still. I feel like there's so much of this push and pull. Um, I I follow you know spiritual leaders and I also listen to my own intuition and and you know, believe in the concept of, of slowing down and of just connecting and, and releasing. And, but then I also listen to these like motivators and I listen to, 
you know, Dean Graciosi and Tony Robbins, and I'm in the mastermind and I'm listening to these people that are saying, you got to own your future. And if you don't own it, someone else will. And it's just that hustle and that grind. And, you know, your feelings don't, shouldn't impact whether or not you show up to do the work. And, you know, it's, it's like this push and pull of like, you know, grind till you die. And also like you're a human being, not a human doing. Right. And it's interesting because I'm I'm finding a balance. So I dedicate a certain number of hours to learning, educating, improving myself in the direction I'm trying to go. So I am taking in information, I'm taking notes, I'm creating, I am making things happen in a certain number of hours a day. But then I also set aside time to just be, whether that means that I want to sit on the beach, whether that means I want to have a dance party by myself, whether that means going out to watch a football game with my husband, whatever that means, I get to just be, and I don't get to beat myself up for it. You know, and then there's like the regular nine to five job and the housework and the this and the that. Um, but I do just, I found that my balance in that go after it can be scheduled. There is room for it if it matters to you. If crafting matters to you, you can find two hours to craft or an hour or 30 minutes here and 30 minutes there. If your health matters to you, you can find time to work out and to, you know, cook and eat healthy food. And if you're on the go, you can still make better choices. Like if things are important to you, you can make time, but I get why you haven't. Because there's that, that comfort that comfort, like what would happen if I actually did stick to a meal plan? What would happen if I did show up and work every day, work out every day? What would happen in a week? Maybe nothing visible, but what about a month? What about six months? What about a year? And what about five years and 10 years? If you were consistent with whatever it is that is your thing. Like this podcast is not instant success and people didn't, you know, come knocking on my door or into my email inbox, sending me book deals, but I'm going to stay consistent with it. I'm going to keep showing up and I'm going to let it continue to work in my life and in your life. And I feel like great value will come from that. And my sobriety, like each day I don't drink, that's adding value to my life. So I'm going to keep doing that. Because doing the opposite definitely takes value from my life and from my relationships and from everywhere that I want to be and puts me back in an even tinier box than the work box. I like being in the great unknown. I am embracing the great unknown. There is no room for that doubt and that worry with where I'm going and with where you're going. It's okay to, to have the thoughts, but don't let them win because they're not helping you. So I have a couple quotes here. I love my quotes. Doubt kills more dreams than failure ever will. So if you try something and you fail, you now have you now have information on what not to do as you move forward. Right? That was uh, Susie Catham. But doubting, I mean, that's already killing your dream before you even get started. You didn't even give yourself a chance. What else do we got? The worst enemy to creativity is self-doubt. That was Sylvia Plath. Uh, 
imagine, look at this. This is a good example. My nephew, Ezra, made this painting of my Luna Pie for my birthday. It's amazing. He's 11. He might have been 10 when he did this. His birthday is the day after mine. But look at that. If Ezra thought, oh, my aunt won't like this, or I'm not as good as whoever, and he just thought, I'm not going to paint things and I'm not going to draw things because I'm worried about what people might think or that it's not going to be received the way I would like. I wouldn't have this gorgeous little painting that reminds me of my boy every day sitting here. And the fact that he's 11 and he is just creating, where's he going to be in five years and in 10 years with that creativity and that, that skill because he's willing to just put it down and put it out there. And he actually has since he was really little and it's amazing. I cannot wait to see, I can't wait to see him all grown up, but I will wait because I don't want that to happen too fast. Um, Theodore Roosevelt said, believe you can and you're halfway there. Because it starts with the belief that it's even possible. It's up to you. If you believe that it is impossible for you to do something, you are 100% right. But if you believe that you can do it, you are halfway there. The next part is just the doing. But you've got to have your mind there in order for you to get your matter going. Self-doubt is the anchor that keeps our ships from sailing. Unknown. If you picture that, like, if we are a ship in the ocean, self-doubt is our anchor. I don't think I could make it to shore over there. I don't think I could make it across these waters. And so your self-doubt just keeps you anchored right where you're at. Let that self-doubt go. I believe in you. Do you believe in me? I bet you do. Like, as much as I have doubted myself to get to this point right now, the feedback that I get from people is that I'm inspiring. And, you know, the fact that I'm willing to just put myself out there. I didn't believe I could do this, but once I did, I could. My husband believed in me and all of you show up and listen. You listening reaffirms my belief in myself. But before you were here, I had to believe that I could be here and I could do this. And so I'm asking you to believe in you and believe that whatever it is that you want, you can do. I mean, the biggest example I have is, is getting sober because I didn't believe that I could do that. I didn't believe that I was the kind of person that could live without alcohol. But I had to just start with a little action. I had to take a chance because the pain of staying the same was greater than my fear of change. It was bigger than my self-doubt. And it was definitely the unknown to step into a life without my best friend, my comfort, my, you know, my celebration and my, my sympathizer. I mean, alcohol was everything. So a life without it was completely unknown and terrifying. I never could have pictured this life. I couldn't picture this me and this 
experience in inside myself and outside myself because I was in I was in that little comfort zone and it was painful in there and it was scary to break that open but it was the best thing that I ever did so if there is something that you want to start but you are afraid of failing or you don't feel like you would be good or people might judge you or whatever that whatever that self doubt is you don't feel like you're anybody to do what you think you want to do i'm here to tell you that the world needs you you are the only you that there is and no one can do things the way that you do and no one has the experience that you do and no one can connect like you can you are unique and you are needed and you are absolutely the right person for the job if it's something that just lights you up and lights you on fire you are needed you know no one makes your spaghetti the way that you do no one does your makeup the way that you do no one no one is you but you and you have your own unique way of doing something there are millions of podcasters and some may really like others you know some more than others but no one can do it like I do it because this is my show my experience and so those of you that are listening are showing up because you resonate with something in me we share something you were not here by accident. I have something that you need to hear. And it's not fair for me to keep this to myself. This message, I'm here to carry it. And on that note, I want to thank you for receiving it. If you're struggling, I just want to tell you, you are going to get through this and you matter. And I'm so glad that you are alive. I'm glad you're here. Please stay. If there is anything that you would like discussed on The Sober Bartender, if there's topics, um, if there's questions, if you'd like to be a guest, please feel free to reach out. My contact info is down in the show notes. And then um, we do have a Sober Bartender podcast group. So on Facebook, there is a group. There's, you know, different different interactions. And um, it's a good place to just meet and have a sense of community. Um, you can find me on Facebook at Brandy Kelly. On Instagram at The Sober Bartender Podcast. On YouTube at The Sober Bartender. And we do have a new meeting happening in Corpus Christi starting Tuesday, September 19th. We are doing a recovery dharma sunrise meditation on the beach. 7 a.m. every Tuesday next to Bob Hall Pier. Or what used to be Bob Hall Pier. So if you are local and you are interested, please join us. It's not limited to, you know, alcohol abuse disorder or, you know, any kind of addiction background. You know, we participate in recovery from life. It's the path out of suffering. And the meditations that we do are very powerful, very impactful. And I feel like grounding into the earth and welcoming the sun is a great is a great addition to what we have going here in Corpus Christi. If you are enjoying the podcast, if you're enjoying these videos, please take time to like, follow, subscribe, rate, review. Um, that will let you know when I put out a new video. That will let you know when I'm sending things out into the world. And it also carries this message. If there's someone that you feel needs to hear the things being discussed on this show, please share this with them. Um, I put out new episodes every Wednesday at 5 a.m. Central. 
So if you'd like to get notified when that happens, just subscribe, follow. I thank you guys so much for listening. I can't describe how happy it makes my heart to sit here and know that I'm not just talking to my face on a screen. I'm talking to people out there that resonate with this message, that resonate with the thoughts that are in my head and that are in my heart. And I hope you heard something today that you needed to hear because it was something that I felt really compelled to say. You are so much bigger than your doubt tells you. I love you guys. I will talk to you next Wednesday.